Just to let you know, portions of this podcast, specifically a couple of the tunes, are not work safe or child safe. Otherwise, this is Mike Dell's World number 115. hope that doesn't happen too soon you know i just got it together myself or at least uh, that's the theory <laughs> anyway welcome to mike dell's world a show about nothing Jeez, i like that <laughs> mike uh, james there I, I, I gotta keep giving him credit uh, that's that's perfect anyway it's uh, the 16th of march 2009 and Spring has maybe sprung here in northern Michigan. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but uh, we're going to get into the high 50s, lower 60s today, and the snow is melting faster than it came. So that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, start getting a little bit of a late start here. I kind of had my I had trouble getting uh, my shit together this morning. Uh, actually, I had planned on doing a uh, portable podcast. Uh, but I got about uh, three blocks from the house and uh, realized the battery in the portable recorder had had died. <laughs> Probably a frostbite because it was still only about 25 degrees out. <laughs> but uh, so then, oh well, I did did the rest of my walk and then came home and figured I'd uh, do it in the studio here, such as it is. Had kind of a bummer of a weekend uh, a little bit of teenager troubles uh, won't uh, go into grisly details but uh, <laughs> that song uh, pretty much uh, sums up what our 15 uh, year old needs to do get his shit together but uh, luckily there's almost no chance he'll be listening to this just because uh, you know us old farts aren't uh, aren't cool enough for him <laughs> Man, wouldn't it be great to just know everything like most 15-year-olds do? You know, they just know everything. And uh, I guess we just lose it from then on. Uh, you know, I've been losing it steadily since uh, since I was 15. <laughs> oh, well, enough of that. Uh, what else has been going on? Uh, not, 
not a hell of a lot to be honest with you uh, that's why i kind of went a little music heavy on this uh, show prep i don't know how much i'll i'll actually play but uh, i got one more that uh, sort of fits the day so i'll definitely play that one and i got a a, a folk version of baby got back <laughs> it's it's the stupidest thing you ever heard of but you know it's kind of like a car wreck you can't turn your head away uh, you just got to keep uh, keep looking or listening in this case <laughs> it's pretty good so i'll have that a little bit later in the podcast and i do uh, swear i will get my promo together uh haven't haven't really got it all done yet but uh I have had uh, some submission, some more submissions of of audio tracks and uh, little wipers, sweepers, whatever you call them, wipers. Hmm, that reminds me of something else entirely. But uh, anyway, got one from uh, Mike James. Got, well, I got quite a few from him, and uh, I'm gonna make good use of them on the uh, on the upcoming promo or promos. I don't know. I might do two or three. What the hell, you know, back to the good old days of podcasting when, you know, everybody send promos to each other and and uh, do do recordings for each other, you know, and back when the Podsafe Music Network was the big thing. <laughs> kind of nostalgic for those days. What has it been, uh, four years now? <laughs> That's ancient history and podcast time. You know, back when Adam Curry used to do a, a daily source code. And uh, I don't think he's done one this month yet. Not sure. He's doing that No Agenda show with the Vorak, and that's pretty cool, I guess. But uh, it's definitely not the good old days of podcasting when, when we had stuff like this. Hey, this is Mike James from Mike Thinks News, and you're listening to Mike Dell's World. I don't know what it's about, but I like it. <laughs> and thanks, Mike. Uh, it's like I said, stuff like that, and I've got a whole bunch of that stuff. So I'm gonna have to get it together, as that last song. Get it, get my shit together, and get it done. And sorry for the uh, earning the explicit tag today. I I just uh, felt it was well, not that it was necessary, but uh, it was acceptable. And uh, you know the way I look at it, uh, I warned you ahead of time. I've got the tag on there. And if you don't like that kind of stuff, that's fine. And I'm not doing it gratuitously. Gratuitously? What the hell was that? Gratuitously. Just uh, just throwing it in there. But, you know, not uh, not too much. Hey, uh, I do have a, another tune here, too, that, uh, like I said, I got way too much music. I, I guess I'll, I'll only say one more thing about one more tune and that'll be all I do uh, music wise. I, I think I think that'll be plenty but you know all this doom and gloom in the economy and doom and gloom and everything you know. Uh, this is a, a song from oh quite a ways back. Uh, I'm thinking it's from somebody over in Europe but uh, it uh, kind of sums up uh, the attitude of the public and uh, more likely the news media and uh, I'll have something to say about that after the tune here I don't want to hear this
Okay, that was Space Rocks Are Falling on Our Heads. I don't know who sang that. I'll find out. But uh, it was in uh, my old uh, Podsafe music folder in, uh, in my music folder, or my iTunes music folder, actually. So I know it's Podsafe. I just don't remember who sang it. And I'm pretty sure it came from the Podsafe music network, but I'm not sure. You know, there's so many people out there that just look at the, you know, they watch the, uh, the 6 o'clock news or 6.30 news, you know, the networks, NBC, CBS, ABC, whatever, or they uh, sit there and watch Fox News or CNN or MSNBC all day long. And, you know, of course, with those guys, it's, you know, everything's doom and gloom, doom and gloom. You know, nothing's looking good. Well, I, I'm happy to report, as I'm recording this, the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average, which, by the way, is a pretty lousy uh, measure of how the total economy is doing. But they're up 118, and this would be the fourth trading day in a row that they're up now you know granted we had uh, a pretty good run of down days and uh, it's going to take a really long run of these up days which probably won't happen uh, to, to make all that up but it's also not the end of the world as we know it you know stuff happens you know the stock market goes down now the S&P which is a much better indicator of the total stock market anyway you know as a you know the dow jones you know it's only the 30 it's only 30 stocks that they pick and actually they're thinking about swapping out a couple of them they're they're thinking about dropping city and and uh, gm and replacing them with uh was it google it's google and apple i think so wouldn't that be something, you know? You, you know if Google does good, then uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average does good. <laughs> well, what does Google and Apple have to do with industrial? Well, yeah, I guess they are industrious, but uh, anyway, it, that just doesn't make sense. So you know, everybody's you know fixed on the Dow. Well, the Dow right now is seventy three forty two as of well, we got the fifteen minute delay on the online thing, but. You know, as the time as of this recording, you know it's up 118 points for the day at 73.42. Uh, you know, from a low, I don't know what their low was. What is it? Low was around 6,000, I think. So you know, we've gained back pretty near a thousand points. Uh, well, all right, 600 points, 700 points. But like I said, that's still not really indicative of the total stock market you, you're better off watching the S&P 500 chart which is 500 stocks and uh, they're up you know they're up about two percent uh, the Dow Jones is 1.65 up and NASDAQ is uh, up a whole whopping 02 percent I'm not giving you a stock report it's probably all different and you know maybe we had a big crash by the time you listen to this or uh, or maybe it went up another thousand points who knows but the point is the sky's not falling there's not space rocks gonna be falling on our heads and and well actually there was one that come pretty close a while back uh, I heard about that on, uh, on Geek News Central and uh, Mike Thinks News and I actually heard it in three different podcasts. I think Andy McCaskey's uh, SDR News, I heard it on also, that we had a, a, a near miss. And But, you know, you know, barring any actual space rocks falling on our heads, there's, you know, the world's not coming to an end. Yeah, we, we're in for some lumpy times. Uh, but that's... Just, you know, it happens over and over again, you know, 2001 during the 9-11 and aftermath thing, you know, the stock market dropped in half. Nobody seems to remember that. Well, now the stock market's dropped in half again. It recovered after 9-11 fairly quickly. 
Uh, the time the time that it dropped the most before that was uh, when Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew both resigned from office, and you know the stock market was back completely in 24 months uh, or something like that. I, I don't remember the exact exact statistic, but uh, you know. It's not as bad as it all seems. And yeah, there's people losing their jobs and there's uh, this and that. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, when you got the news media coming on every night and, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, does that make you want to go out to, to uh, Sears and buy a flat screen TV? Does that make you want to go down to the Chevy dealer and, uh, and buy a car? Or whatever car dealer you want to go to, no, it makes you you know you think well you know you know I could go down and buy the car you know nothing's affected me, you know a lot of people are you know have not been affected one little bit, and then there's others who have, you know and if you're if you're hurting well I'm sorry and you know but you know that happens but I I think it's sometimes an excuse for a company, you know. Uh, you know, they make an excuse, well, wow, the economy's bad, so we'll just lay off a bunch of people. You know, and I, I think that's the case in a lot of these layoffs. You know, they're really not hurting. It's just they're, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't, <laughs> it, it dumbfounds me that, you know, I, I forget who made this quote. It might have been a uh, Mark Twain quote, but... Uh, Never underestimate the stupidity of people in large groups. And I think that's what's going on. You know, I, I think really, you know, the, and the stock market itself is nothing more than just a bunch of emotion. You know, uh, the people that buy and sell and trade stocks, you know, the fund managers and the stockbrokers and and, you know, even the, the poor guy that's at home trying to day trade, well, that was a big bust. I thought about doing that at one time. thought better of it, and I'm glad I did. But, you know, it's it's like, you know, some somebody says something in the news, and the stock market reacts to it. Well, it doesn't going to matter one iota to the value of General Motors you know, if there was an earthquake in Bangladesh or, you know, or whatever, you know, it's whatever sets them off, you know, it's like, you know, they, they, they uh, announce the unemployment rate. Well, the unemployment rate's up to 7%, and then the stock market crashes 500 points. Well... What the hell? What difference does it make? Actually, if the unemployment rate goes up, some of those stocks are worth more because they're putting out less. You know, it's, it's just goofy. So, you know, if, you, if you're sitting at home and you're watching these 24-hour news channels that uh, have to fill 24 hours with something and they generally gravitate to the negative, so you've got this twisted, warped view of the world through the eyes of a 24-hour news cycle. And, you know, of course you're not going to feel like going out and spending money. Well, enough people are sitting there watching those 24-hour news cycles and not spending money. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, it's like, Oh, times are bad, times are bad, times are bad, and, you know, everybody sits home and says, okay, times are bad, we're not going to spend no money. Well, then times do actually get bad. I, I don't, I guess I don't know how to explain it fully, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the news media that's driving all this crap. Now, I figured, you know, when they uh, elected Obama... Uh, you know, and everybody was so positive about that, you know, that, oh, my God, you know, all of a sudden the news media would start reporting how everything is so much better now that George Bush is out of office. Well, you know what? You know, 
if the president and I've said this before, I don't know on the podcast, but I know in, in you know personal conversations I've said this a hundred times. I, if the president had control over the economy, we would never have a bad economy. I mean, what president would you know if you had control over it, would you let it go bad? Of course not. So, I mean, why is it that, you know, like Bill Clinton just happened to be there when we had a little bit of a boom? And, uh, you know, and uh, George Bush Sr., the first President Bush, just happened to catch a, a small recession right around election time. And then, of course, George, George Bush, the uh, younger that just left office caught a pretty bad one and you know they, yeah there's a lot of skullduggery going on in washington there's a lot of skullduggery going on on wall street you know that's undeniable you know and all these banks that would uh, you know give a mortgage and a credit card to anything with a heartbeat and sometimes with things that didn't have a heartbeat you know that credit crunch is all on their own well i got a cure for that don't use credit. Simple as that. You know, now, you know, I've got a mortgage and I don't have any car loans. I'm working on getting rid of the credit cards. But, you know, really, you know, operating on, on cash is probably the better way to go. And I think with all this credit crisis uh, you know everything's a crisis too you ever notice that on the news it's the this crisis and that crisis well you know what you know all those mortgage companies that you know gave loans to just whoever because that's what you know that was the the thing you know well mortgage companies that didn't do that now now we we have our mortgage with a, a community bank and what that is is what ba all banks used to be, but now they got these huge conglomerate banks like Citigroup and and Bank of America and I don't know, there's three, four of them. But our mortgage is with a little local community bank. There's you know three branch offices and plus the main office. It's all based right here in Traverse City. And they don't sell their mortgages to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or whoever else buys mortgages and then cuts them up into derivatives and blah this and blah that. So they have their own uh, manual underwriting. They don't. They don't even look at your FICO score. Well, they look at your FICO score, but they don't. They don't. Uh, as as Dave Ramsey would say, they don't worship at the altar of the great FICO. In other words. Uh, you know, somebody going for a mortgage and uh, they've paid their landlord early or on time for the last two years and they don't have any late pays in the last two years and and they're not, uh, their debt to income ratio isn't off scale. They're not even going to look at their FICO score, you know, they're, or they're not even going to take that into consideration to get a mortgage and you'll get a decent normal mortgage instead of these you know, 80-20 loans or these uh, variable interest rate loans, uh, you know. And if you got something like that, man, get rid of it. Right now is the best time to refinance. And, uh, well, I would just say go listen to Dave Ramsey's show if you get it locally on your radio station or, or subscribe to his uh, free one-hour podcast. Uh, because he he pushes a particular mortgage company which i won't mention they don't need any more advertising than dave ramsey but uh, uh, that mortgage company seems to uh, have their head pulled out of their behinds and can do this manual underwriting so even if you think your credit's bad and you've done well and you're in one of these crappy loans uh, you know get out of it seriously Anyway, gosh, I got on a soapbox there, didn't I? I just I'm getting kind of sick and tired of the the doom and gloomers. Uh, you know, even if it is as bad as they say, you know what? I don't want to hear about it all the time. 
you know, I, I just as soon be uh, slightly less informed and, and happy. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, I don't need to. I don't need to hear the. You know, the world's coming to an end as we know it, and the dollar's collapsing, and this is collapsing, and this is a crisis, and that's a crisis. Well, you know what? Uh, it's not that bad yet. Now, I'm not saying there's not a possibility. I mean, you know, at work, where I work, you know, they have brought up the economy. Well, our workload doesn't seem to be changing much the cost of things are is actually going down i mean look what gas was last summer compared to uh, what it is now you know it's it's around two bucks a gallon around here you know, you know dime less maybe as opposed to you know four something a gallon so that's got to cut a lot of the operating expense of a business and transportation and whatever so, you know, you can't blame everything on the economy. You know, the economy is what you make of it. Uh, you know, now, if you've lost your job, well, okay, <laughs> you've been affected. But I, I don't really think it's as bad as they say it is. So, anyway, well, let's have a little uh, comic relief here. Here's uh, Jonathan Colton with his version of Baby Got Back. Had a face with the Oakland booty. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You are the brothers, can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Shout. 
demo does not have very much to do at all with my selection. I mean, 36, 24, 36, maybe if she's 5'3. So your girlfriend rules a Honda, playing workout tapes by Fonda. But Fonda ain't got a motor in the back of her Honda. My Anaconda don't want none, unless you have got buns. And you can do that bends or sit ups. Brothers want to play that hard role and tell you that the butt ain't gold. So they toss it and they leave it. And I pull up quick to retrieve it. So Cosmo says you're fat. Well, I ain't down with that. Cause your waist is small and your curves are kicking. And I'm thinking about sticking to the bean poles, bands, and the magazines. You ain't it, this thing. Give me a sister. I can't resist her. Red bean and less didn't miss her Some knucklehead tried to diss Cause his girls are on my list He had game but he chose to hit him And I pull up quick to get with him So lady, yeah. if the buddy's around yeah. Then you wanna triple X roll down yeah. Dial 1900, Johnny C and Kick them nasty thoughts Baby This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No ease. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y dot com. Blueberry dot com. Okay, well, I'm back. And uh, that was Jonathan Colton uh, for his uh, thing a week. I've been playing one of his things every week here for the last uh, few anyway. <laughs> But uh, he's got some great stuff over there. So look it up. Thing a week. Jonathan Colton. And uh, he's got all kinds. He's he's the guy that came up with, uh, what was that? Uh, Code Monkey. Uh, you, if you're a, a geek, you probably heard of that. Uh, if not, uh, go check that out. So anyway, sorry to get off on a tangent there. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't get sometimes, you know, why people torture themselves by paying such close attention to the uh, the mainstream media's proclivity to uh, report what bleeds leads you know there's there's other information out there that's more reasonable you know who's to know what's true you know really uh you know the the you know the the mainstream media will say that you know everybody on the web is is not telling the truth and you know then again on the uh, mainstream media you know how how do we know that they're telling the truth you know i've been involved with broadcasting on and off for you know quite a while and i got to say you know every story uh, when I worked at the uh, local NBC affiliate, every story that I had any personal knowledge of or any story that I had any personal knowledge of that was written up in the local newspaper had something materially wrong with it. You know, so, some part of the story was wrong. You know, the basic story was right, but the, you know, some of the details were completely wrong and changed, you know, the story enough to where, you know, that's not the real story. And I got to believe that, you know, the the national media and the cable news networks and all that stuff, you know, all those people, are, it's got to be the same. You know, and, and there are people that say, you know, oh, there's a left bias, there's a right bias, you know, this, that, and the other. Now, in local news... I didn't notice any, you know, left or right bias per se. You know, most of the reporters and anchors were left-leaning. 
but I don't give them enough credit to even know what the hell they're talking about, to be honest with you. I, I, I guess that's that's kind of mean, but you know, I don't think they even think about it. You know, they just read what's on the teleprompter or read what AP has to say, or if they actually go out and get a story, they're not thinking about to you know twisting and turning it their way. They're just you know thinking about getting it reported. And they don't care much about the truth. They just care what's going to be a good story. That's that's the point. There's no left or right bias, or if you know, there probably is on, on a national scale. You know, uh, you know, you, you look at CNN and NBC and MSNBC, and you know, there is definitely an obvious left lean to them, and then people say well there's a right lean to the to fox news well fox news is just lame but there's no right lean or left lean to them and that's why that everybody thinks they're leaning to the right is is because they're not left leaning like cnn and nbc uh, you know but they're just as lame as the rest of them you know, it's it's what ble you know whatever bleeds leads, and you know there's there's no good news out there, and we'll find the bad news if we gotta make it up. You know, that's I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little harsh on them, but that's the way I think. You know, it's like you know uh, I don't need to know every little detail. You know, I could give a crap less that you know. Barack Obama may have known somebody who did this, that, or the other thing, or George Bush knew somebody that did this and that and the other thing. Well, you know what? It's just one guy, or two guys in this case, you know, but one guy is the president. And, you know, he can only process so much information in a day and, and through a lifetime that, you know, I honestly think that that you know whoever runs for that office it's got rocks in their head for one thing because you know who the hell would want that job yeah sure it's cool to have the airplane and and uh, you know the mansion and be able to you know do do that kind of thing you know the, the perks are great and the pay's not too bad you know a quarter, well, half a million dollars a year or was it 400,000 a year Plus, you know, all your living expenses taken care of and and everything else. But, man, you know, who who would want to live up to that expectation? Uh, you, know, you know, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, <laughs> that job sucks. And uh, I guarantee you, you could uh, ask anybody that's uh, been president. Of course, there ain't been that many of them that are still alive but i would guarantee if, if deep down if you could actually get them to tell you the truth uh, they would say you know you know it really sucked i couldn't you know i couldn't fart without somebody you know saying something about it and you know who wants to live your life that way it's just not uh, not something i would want to do you know so I, you know i i have respect for them and i i will disagree with some of their policies or attempted policies and, and you know and that's the thing the president really doesn't have as much power as we give him credit for and you know or the media gives him credit for because you know as i said before you know when clinton was in office the, the economy boomed had not one thing to do with bill clinton and you know when george bush you know, the latest George Bush, 43, was in office. You know, we all this uh, Wall Street shenanigans and the real estate mortgage shenanigans all come to a head. And he, you know, he might have had a little to do with it, but, you know, that wasn't guaranteed that it's not the intention of the president to make the economy tank. <laughs> it's just not, you know. Because that's usually what elects the other party. You know, you can you can look at you know historically, or at least in the last you know forty years, it's it's almost always 
if the economy's bad during the election, the incumbent gets trumped. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. Uh, now, you know, when Bill Clinton got done, the economy was doing, I guess, all right. But there was a lot of scandals and stuff while he was in office. And, you know, George Bush won. Yes, he really did win. You know, uh, they, they've, they've recounted and recounted and recounted the 2000 Florida election. And George Bush won every time they recounted it. So, you know, even after the election. So he did legitimately win the presidency. But and so that's a moot point. Don't even argue with me about it. You know, Al, Al Gore, uh, he's making his millions, uh, perpetuating the, the global warming, which which I think is actually kind of hilarious that, that uh, th this year and the last year, both, every time there was some sort of global warming conference that got snowed out or, or something, <laughs> you know, we could use some global warming here, man. Uh, we're up to 40 finally. Uh, like I said, we're supposed to get up to near 60, 57 degrees. But, you know, where's the global warming? We had we had what what is traditionally known around Michigan as a normal winter. We haven't had a normal winter since the 80s. You know, it's not global warming. Now they're calling it climate change. Well, yeah, of course the climate does change. At one time... We were covered in ice. You know, that's what, that's what uh, made the Great Lakes, is glaciers. Well, the glaciers went away, so we had some global warming to get rid of the glaciers. Now we've got the Great Lakes. Well, climate's going to change again. And, you know, hundreds of years from now, thousands of years from now, it's going to change back. Maybe we'll have another glacier, and it'll uh, rearrange the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes will be over in Idaho somewhere. But... You know, what they're talking about is man-made global warming. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not for pollution, believe me. You know, I, I'm not going to say that uh, pollution is good, but, you know, one volcano, you know, like, what was it, uh, Mount Vesuvius? I, I don't know, uh, whatever. The, the, over in the Philippines, there was some big... Uh, volcanic eruption well that, vo that volcano spewed more crap into the atmosphere than all of mankind has done since you know the dark ages and that's a scientific fact there's more particulate matter there's more carbon dioxide there's more uh, greenhouse gases spewed by that one volcanic eruption than every man, woman, and child that's ever lived since the Dark Ages has produced. You know, even diesel trucks and, and uh, coal factories and all this. Now, you know, pollution on a local scale, sure, that's, that's legit. You know, Lake Erie, you know, for a long time, Lake Erie was polluted pretty badly. It's been cleaned up quite a bit. The Cuyahoga River in Cleveland caught on fire. It had so much crap in it, it had more crap you know, in it than, or more, more uh, flammable crap in it than it had water. That's a river that uh, flows into, the, into, the, into Lake Erie in, around Cleveland. And, you know, and a lot of that's been cleaned up. You know, it's probably not perfect. You know, even the, the, the Boardman River, our little river here in Traverse City that flows into Lake Michigan. You know, I wouldn't drink the water that, that comes out of the Boardman, but it's certainly a whole lot cleaner than it was, you know, 20 years ago. But, like I said, that all aside, humans don't really have the power to screw up the atmosphere. Well, well maybe we do, but... You know, it's it's not screwing up the atmosphere on a large scale, in my humble opinion. You may disagree, that's fine. You know, just like uh, people disagree whether you have a PC or a Mac. <laughs> I won't even get into that one. But, you know, I, I remember I lived in Boise, Idaho, 
and every winter they'd have what's known as temperature inversions and they would make you not uh, you know there was an ordinance where you couldn't burn your wood stove or your fireplace uh, during an inversion and it was because the in temperature inversion where it was colder near the ground than it was up above or was it the other way around the warm air was trapped under the cold air i forget but it would hold the, the smoke close to the ground and yeah that sucked but it you know first good windstorm after that happened it blow all the smoke out of the valley and all that same thing with the smog in california you know in la you know, smog in la is getting better but like i said it's not a matter that we're going to destroy the planet if i don't drive a prius it, it you know we might screw up our ability to live in a particular spot for a while. That I, I'll agree with. But, you know, the, the planet's going to survive. You know, the planet's going to shake us off like a flea infestation when it decides to. And, you know, 20 years or, 20 years or whatever, you know, a, a short amount of time geologically... After all humans go extinct, you would probably never know that we were even here. So the planet's going to survive. Like I said, I, I don't disagree that we can uh, screw up our ability to live in a certain spot. But, uh, you know, global warming, I'm sorry, and since I've tagged this explicit, global warming is bullshit. And uh, I, I invite you to prove me wrong. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, coming up on uh, is it 52 minutes. Wow. And I didn't think I had anything to say today. Uh, I'm going to play that last tune that I uh, was saying I was going to play. This one uh, is definitely appropriate to the situation. It's, uh, it's all about consequences and, and karma. I believe wholeheartedly that what goes around comes around. And, you know, your actions, my actions, you know, our actions have consequences. You know, good, bad, or otherwise. Uh, and I, I honestly don't think the powers that be, and I'm not talking government, I'm talking, you know, God, the, the life force, whatever you want to call it, uh, I don't think that God really holds a grudge, you know, but if you do A, you get B, you get you do C, you get D, uh, you know, and yeah, I think there's a lot to this uh, karma theory. So anyway, I'm not going to come back after this, so I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I'm going to play uh, the song Karma. It's by uh, Anthony Hugh off of the Podsafe Music Network, and it's 5 minutes and 23 seconds, I think I'm reading here. And uh, I'll just uh, call it a podcast. Thanks for listening. Stupid joke He thinks I'm witty Welcome to an average day Hope things go my way That's positive thinking Today's the day The only day Today my ship is coming in 
Fortune calls and sick Destiny gets his ass kicked And my luck is hiding somewhere in the past Fate will set me free Reality feels like make-believers All my sins line up to kick my ass Come on my own Calendar says 6th of June I'm getting older Just let my soulmate walk away without a trace There's just a few things that I should have told her My emotions don't seem to work My feelings don't get hurt And all that other stuff you're supposed to say Been in life and she's a gray But my dreams out of clay Is there any other way? Produced with Cast Blaster.